My name is Olivia Castellini, and I'm a senior exhibit developer at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. I help make all of the exhibits that are here. So I help develop the content and design the experience and what people get to do when they're here in the exhibit. The Science Storms exhibit with the big four-story tornado and the avalanche disc. Uh, my role on that project was to help develop the science content, but also the activities and the experience that our visitors have when they come in. So helping think about you know, designing a tornado that people can come manipulate and stand in to understand dynamics of gas laws and thermodynamics. So the Science Storms exhibit features seven natural phenomena. We have a large scale recreation of each one. So we have an avalanche disc, tornado, tsunami, sunlight, fire, lightning, and atoms in motion. So with each of those, it's a sort of a pathway into a different area of physics or chemistry. Numbers in Nature is another exhibit here um, that is about finding the, the patterns and the math that underlies them out there in the world. So there are certain patterns that occur all the time. So there are spirals. Our ear is a spiral, a spiral galaxy. Um, you know, if we can find these patterns, branching happens. You see tree branches all over the place. The airways in our lungs branch. So if you find these patterns that recur all over the place, we can use math to describe them to either understand that thing better or understand connections between things in our world. I could not have told you when I was a kid that I would end up working in a science museum designing science exhibits. I've always been interested in science and math. I also started out as a violin player when I was five, so I always had sort of the math and the arts thing going on. When it came down to it, I ended up double majoring in physics and music um, and really loved it. And at the end of college, decided to pursue my PhD in physics. I was very lucky to have some really phenomenal teachers, especially in physics. Finding those kind of mentors along the way is so important, and I was very lucky. The other aspect of that that I really appreciate now as well is that I had very strong female mentors in physics. So starting with my high school physics teacher, who ultimately inspired me to go into the field, um, she was wonderful and just a phenomenal teacher and really was a, a great resource for me through, at that stage. Then when I got into undergrad, there was a female professor who was my advisor, who was fantastic. And then as a graduate student, there was a female faculty member who was not my advisor, but she took an interest in me and really helped me along the way. And then rounding it all out, when I got to my postdoc, I worked for a wonderful professor um, who is also a woman in engineering, who really did a great job at helping me sort of figure out the next steps after uh, grad school and really helped me pursue my interests and define what those were. For other students and women who are pursuing degrees in STEM, I think it's very important to seek out mentors, um, particularly female mentors. In my experience as a physicist, I was one of the few women in the room most of the time. And there's a different, different way of thinking and a different aspect to the collaboration and the scientific process that I think women can bring. Um, that is unique and finding other women who can help you feel more comfortable in that situation and help you find your voice and learn how to work collaboratively with other people in your research group is very important. With the work that I do now and working with students and teachers, I find a real responsibility and I try very hard to be a mentor myself and to encourage female students and uh, female professors to become mentors themselves because it is so important and it can make such a difference.